you have, if you don't remember, my name is Laura Ivig, and I'm an athletic trainer with Well Trail. Jenna Sniffen, she's an exercise physiologist with Well Trail. I've been with Well Trail almost four years. Uh, Jenna's been with Well Trail two? A year and a half. A year and a half? Okay. Okay. Um, as Well Guides, we work with our individuals on their goals, and I think we've kind of talked about that before. Uh, it's any goal, whatever. Uh, each person has an individual problem or an individual goal, and, and that's our that's our, game, our that's our goal or our aim is to work on their individuals, whether it's their likes, their dislikes, barriers they have, barriers they don't have, things like that. And to go with this, our holidays give additional challenges to uh, to those goals that you might have been working on all year. So. But I personally, I love the holidays. To me, it just is, it seems hopeful to me. Um, there are people, you know, there, there are people you get to see just at the holidays. Weddings and funerals. <laughs> I know, that's, that's kind of the way my family works. We just had two family weddings, and that was it. We hadn't seen these people in like 30 years. So. But again, the other part of that too is the holidays bring, you know, a lot of fun, family and friends, parties, you know, getting dressed up, having fun stuff that way, you know, and it also brings gift giving. Who doesn't like presents? Okay, I like presents. And the best thing I like about presents is watching people's faces light up when they get the present, looking at them, seeing, you know, that's why I usually can't wait to give people presents when I have them for them. So, and another one that holidays bring is the food at the holidays. I mean, there's food that I wait for all year just to have at the holidays because that's special to me. There's all, and, and again, that leads into traditions and moments and things like that that always happen at the holidays. Well, the holidays can also bring um, a lot of those challenges that, that we have. Thank you. Um, there we go. You know, Sometimes those challenge, challenges can be missing those people that we've had and, and seen before, but they're no longer around. And, and, oh, I remember when, when Grandpa, my favorite story is my grandfather, who was crazy. I loved him. He was awesome. 91 years old, couldn't walk very well, but boy, he sure would sing to us and could sing pretty well. Sharpest attack until he died. Miss him a lot at Christmas. You know, people we don't see anymore. Things that we, you know, so many things that we do. I mean, look at the commitments. Okay, I gotta go here, and I gotta go here, and I gotta go here. You got all of those things to do and not enough time to do it in. You have your financial ones. You know, look at the, the finances that you have going on there. I gotta buy gifts for this one, I gotta buy gifts for this one. Really need to buy that. Yeah, and it's like, okay, I got that much money. How are we gonna make that work? Okay, things like that. And then there's the awesome food. To, you know, things like that. The, the pressure to live up to traditions is like, you know, grandma used to put this feed on for 50 people and I got to do it the same because it was always perfect. And what you never saw was grandma in the kitchen going nuts because something wasn't working right. A lot of pressure like that. One of, the, one of my favorite things is cooking cookie parties. I like to cook. So having relatives come over and cook and make cookies and make fun treats and things like that. Those were always fun traditions for me. And that was, those can bring on a lot of stresses. Another stress would be how many people are coming? Do we have enough beds for them? Uh, is there enough food? Do we have that? You know, and, and who's going to show up that I don't know that I don't have a gift for? You know, things like that. So then you have that and you have all of these goals that you've been working on all year long. Like, when am I going to exercise? How am I going to make sure that I eat correctly? What am I going to do with these leftovers that I know I'm not going to eat? Or maybe you say to yourself, I shouldn't eat. What are you going to do with all of those? Okay? So what we're going to try and do is we're going to try and help you out with some of that. So as Laura said, the holidays really bring out a lot of amazing things, but also stress and emotions. And some of this stress may also stem from us trying
trying to maintain our healthy investments that we have tried all year to to maintain or you know trying to stick with the current health status because we're you know we're pretty healthy and we just want to want to be you know at baseline at the end of the year and not have a few extra pounds um, so we are challenged an awful lot during the, the holiday season and food is probably one of the most prevalent um, challenges that we do see since we can remember food um, food has been pretty much everywhere we've used it for celebration we've used it to cope We've used it to avoid certain situations, and most importantly, we, for a lot of us, it's been used as a large part of our traditions. So when you're doing this and you're determining your goal and your plans, it's like, what specific goal are you looking to, and this doesn't have to be just in the holidays, this could be throughout the year. What specific goals are you working for? Another big one is, do you have any specific health concerns? High blood pressure, diabetes, knee pain, back pain, hip pain, any of those things. What do you have? And then you get to the holidays and you're like, I've been working really hard towards my goal and I'm getting, I have a knee problem, I'm getting better, and now I have, you know, holidays are here and I have all this time commitment, what am I going to do? Okay? You don't have to throw everything out the window. You know, stress can change some of this. You might even feel more about what you're, you, you might even feel more pain in that area because you're eating different foods, you're doing, you're not doing things, or you are doing things. To get your goal and plan going, that's what, how you should determine, you know, with these two questions. First of all, I love food, I love to cook. Uh, but I'm not going to eat things that I don't like. You know, okay, I know this is good for me, and I'm going to have kale, and I don't really like kale. So I don't eat it. You know, I know it's probably good for me, but I'm still not going to eat it. Um, but there's a lot of other things out there. Will I, if somebody cooked it differently, will I try it? Of course I will. Because as a child, I hated Brussels sprouts. I hated Brussels sprouts. And as I got older and started on my journey with Well Trail, I didn't realize I forgot that I hated. I always had in my head I hated Brussels sprouts, but then I started trying them again. Give me more! So that's how I roll. Plus, I still love all of those treats. Ask anybody. I still love chocolate a lot, but I set myself a limit on how much of that I'm going to have because I know I'm going to have more treats over here. So I'll just have a little. That's the way we want to work with that. Okay? So we have just a few general holiday tips for you to help you get through. Um, it's very important to maintain as normal of a schedule as possible. Balance is really the key, the key factor here for the, the, this time of year. Try to maintain a regular eating schedule, whether you're shopping or you're bouncing from party to party. Really try to stick to your healthy foods that you've already you know, decided that you like, and and just make sure that you try to have at least half a plate of lean protein and half a plate of vegetables. This will help you stay satisfied throughout the day. You also want to make sure that you stay hydrated. I know I'm very guilty of shopping all day and only, you know, consuming very little water, you know, when I'm eating something. Um, so really just make sure that you stay hydrated, you have um, at least half your body weight in ounces of water. So for example, um, a 150 pound person needs at least 75 ounces of water at least for the day. You also want to try to maintain as normal of a sleep schedule as you can. Obviously there's busy schedules, there's late parties, but at least try and get about seven to eight hours a night. Um, it might not be possible, but when we have less sleep, our bodies need more energy to stay awake. Therefore, we find ourselves eating more to compensate for this increase in energy. So then, not only are we tired, but we're also you know, gaining a few pounds too. And also try to stick to your activity or exercise routine with the stress and the emotions, um, the release of the endorphins will really help make those um, more manageable. And also in the midst of all the chaos, you really want to make sure that you find time for yourself. You know, whatever that means. 
It could be a walk at the end of the day or early in the morning, reading a book, stretching, or doing some deep breathing exercises. Whatever you need to do to help stay relatively calm and relaxed this, this season, you should, you should do it. So just a few holiday tips for the office. It's really key to try and plan and prepare. So just be aware that there may be some excess cookies or sweets that a coworker has brought in, or there may be several holiday in-office parties that may have many appetizers or snacks that aren't really compatible with your plan. So you also want to make sure that you bring your own healthy foods and that they're accessible. Um, and you also want to make sure that you love the foods that you're eating. If you're really dreading your lunch that you brought, and you know that your coworkers down the hall are having your favorite chili dip or mozzarella sticks, you'll be that more enticed by it if you aren't looking forward to your food. You could also try for the buddy system or asking for help and support during this time. You could share with somebody your plans, your goals, whatever your, your investments are and see if they could help you or join you with them. If not, maybe just simply ask for encouragement or motivation during this time. If you can't host the party and be on your own turf um, so that you're in charge of your own you know, environment and the food that you can serve, um, try eating a balanced meal before the party. Again, try and stick to a half a plate of uh, vegetables and a half a plate of protein that will keep us energized and satisfied. And if you know that you will be eating at the party, you don't want to overeat beforehand, so just have a little something um, and then everything in moderation, just have a little something at the party. You also want to make sure that you drink water before and during the party. It keeps us feeling, feeling full and oftentimes our bodies com confuse hunger and thirst. So sometimes we feel hungry, but really we're just thirsty. So just make sure that you stay hydrated and then when you do feel hungry, you really know you're hungry and you can, you can eat. And a bonus, water keeps us hydrated, so if we will consume uh, alcohol developed beverages later on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it will help with that. You could also bring some dishes or appetizers to share. That way you always know that there's something that you can eat or that's healthy enough. And you know, you may surprise others as well. You could, you know, bring Brussels sprouts and share with somebody and they could find a new favorite vegetable. So if you're not sure uh, what kind of food could be at the party or if you're party hop hopping all day, it's always a smart idea to uh, shop for your own food and put it in a cooler and pull it out whenever you need it. It's always there. One of the things that I've learned for, uh, for going to parties it is, is don't stand by the food table. It is so easy. Hey, Jenna, how's it going? Oh, I'm so they're just chewing away at something that is really good. And all of a sudden, the half the bowl of check mix is gone. You know, you just stand right there. Well, take a plate, move yourself away from the food. Another one that we have is use a small plate. You know, we're not really worried about being a member of the Clean Plate Club here. So, you know, have that smaller plate, and if there were things on there that you didn't like, then just push that aside, you know, that's okay. But a smaller plate is going to say, oh, I've filled up my plate, and it's, it's I'm good. So that means you can stick with, good, with what you want to do. Again, honor your body. If, it, if you get to it, you know, there's sometimes if you, there's something there that either doesn't smell good, doesn't feel good, doesn't, it either has the wrong texture, or as soon as it hits your tongue, you know it's wrong. Well, honor your body. You don't have to finish that. You know, why be sick the rest of it? Again, Jenna's talked about the half plate lean meat, half plate vegetables. Well, remember, that protein's going to keep you satisfied. The vegetables are carbs. They're going to give you energy to keep going and be the, you know, be the life of the party, like Jenna is all the time. And, you know, and give you that base of what your body needs. Okay? Also remember that the first two bites of something, 
is probably going to give your tongue the most of the flavor that you're going to get out of it. After the third bite, it pretty much, the flavor kind of dissipates. You, you've had all of it that you're going to get. So that's the way it's going to roll, okay? So just remember that. Now, if you're, if you're going you know, on the road, you can have my favorite thing. Car food, but you know when I was younger, car food was you know chips and, and soda and all the other stuff. And now for me, car food is still is still great. You know I got a bag of grapes in there, or I've got I'll, I'll take some some sweet peppers and I'll cut them up. Or the mini peppers, oh those are awesome. Take those and just munch on them as I'm going down the road. And then you can have whatever lean meat you want to have. That's pretty easy to do. And just having that in there solves two things. One, if you're going to a party where you don't know the, what the, what the menu is going to be, now you have food that you can do. I went to a wedding about a month ago now, and I had no idea what was going to be at it. It was going to be an evening wedding. So my husband and I went to the grocery store, loaded it up, had it there, looked at what was there, and I got to the car and got the cooler and put it in. Because there was stuff, all, everything that they had there pretty much was stuff I couldn't eat. It was all off of my plan. So I had my own. And it worked out fine. Nobody said a word. Everybody was, in fact, my sister kept eating my grapes. What are you doing? <laughs> Your grapes are good. I know. But, you know, that was, that's kind of the way it went like that. Um, you know, so stock up, plan ahead, have it in there. Now, another one that if you're going out for dinner, this is the one that I like a lot of times. Almost every restaurant in town has their, has their menu online. If you go into a restaurant and you're, you want to make sure that you stick to your plan, look at what they have. One of my favorite, one of, used to be my favorites, they close now. They had some of the best rotisserie chicken that I could, I, I love it. And we went there all the time. But the rotisserie chicken came with, on a bed of rice with a potato and vegetable. Which, for most people, that was great. But at that point in time, I wasn't eating potatoes and I wasn't eating the rice. So that was off my hand, off my So I look at her, hey, can you double these vegetables? Or I'd ask them what the vegetable was. And sometimes they gave me a choice of a couple. And I'd either take one or both. But we have broccoli and we have asparagus. I'm like, oh, bring them both on. Can you double that up? Most times with vegetables or something like that, they are so OK with substituting. They may charge you a little bit for it, but truthfully, how much is that worth to you? So don't be afraid to, to, take, to take, make a substitution. The other one, too, is if you're trying to control car, car excuse me, you're trying to control bread, which can be inflammatory, I'll make them take it away. I'm not going to eat the bread. Don't put it on the table. Save it for somebody else. I really don't want it. And so I'll just make them take it away. Many people drink more on the holidays. Um, there's a number of reasons as to why. Um, there's more social events. There's more stress. This could be anything from busier schedules, financial burdens, missing loved ones, stressful relationships. And this can really lead to intentional and unintentional um, excess of alcohol use. So we really want to make sure we understand the concerns with an overindulging, not just having one or two, but really overindulging. Um, many of us know that alcohol dehydrates us, and also it aggravates a various number of health conditions. Uh, it increases blood pressure and cholesterol levels. It can change blood, um, blood sugar levels for your diabetics and it can also worsen inflammatory conditions. So when we consume alcohol, we're really just packing on the empty calories. For every seven, gram, seven calories of alcohol, it equals one gram. So this chart right here that you can see says the type of drink, on average, how many calories it has and how many minutes it takes to run it off on average. So let's take a look at the hard cider. Many of us, we don't consume you know, just one during a maybe five to seven hour party. So let's go with three to four glasses of hard cider. 
That's about an hour awesome. and a half of running. No, it's not. Is it on your list? Yes, it's actually. Right in the middle. Right there. Oh. <laughs> or let's take a look at the dry red one, which is my personal favorite. <laughs> 85 calories and 12.5 minutes in just one glass. If you're doing about three glasses, four glasses, you're at about 40 minutes. Of so how many ounces does that come out to be? I think you were doing that on a four. Uh, generally, a, a four is about four, or four to six ounces. Yes. Yeah, that's a stand. That's a standard glass. Standard quantity. glass is about four, four to five ounces. Yeah. 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 And that that you know it's kind of hard to digest because that's not even taking into account all the food that we. Think about the size of wine glasses you have. Oh, yeah. Okay. Correct. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or not restaurants, party. Like, yeah. Probably drinking three glasses of wine and not the wine. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, so just be mindful. It's not telling, you know, I'm not telling you guys to not drink at all. Just be mindful of, of what's, what's there. Exactly. So a lot of the what to do with your hangover, again, be, stay hydrated. I've been to enough parties in my life where, you know, as soon as they see that your glass is half empty or less, they're filling you up. So that's the thing you have to really concern yourself with. If you got a glass of, or even if it's a glass of water in your hand, or a bottle of water in your hand, if it stays fairly full, people will generally leave you alone. So you want to drink at least eight ounces of water between each, between each alcoholic beverage. Two, Place the water that's going to get put out. Plus, keep a glass in your hand or something in your hand that somebody isn't constantly filling you up with something that you really don't want. Okay. Now we all know what drinking does on an empty stomach. <laughs> it's never a good thing. So making sure that you have that balanced meal before you start drinking and eating a little bit something while you're drinking, just you know, non-salty stuff that just adds more to the dehydration. Um, so, it, it, you know, eating good helps with the metabolism. It also helps with the metabolism of the alcohol, but eating, eating something good. Um, also, the other one, too, is setting limits. Have a preset limit of what you're going to drink that day. And if you have a buddy at a party, um, you know, have them give you a signal that says, okay, you know, like I tell Jennifer, go up and stand real close to me and bug me, you know, or whisper in my ear, you said you were only going to have two, is that where you're going with this? You know, again, you're not trying to tell someone what to do because you may change your mind as things go on. And you have that right. But that person who's helping you try to stay on your plan, and again, it very, is very necessary, it needs to be somebody that you trust and are going to listen to. If it's going to be not going to be someone you're not going to listen to, then you know what's the point? So somebody that's going to help you stay on track, you know. And so the other person is that have have someone designated today. Hey, have you had enough? Hey, you know, so that that person can say, you know, maybe you've had too much. And as always, if you're going to drink, please designate a driver so that you don't. Even if you choose to drink one. Um, that was kind of the way my husband and I are sick, our, our thing is with each other. If one's going to drink, the other one is not. And that's just kind of how, how it works. Even if you only have one the whole night, that's just, that's the way it goes. The holidays are an amazing time to get together with family and friends. Um, but among these people, there might be someone or a few people that may challenge the healthy investments that we've been making or we want to make. They usually come in about three forms, the caretaker, the food pusher, and the insecure relative. And it's important to realize that in all of these instances, the problem is not you, typically the problem is with them. So in order to save your peace and maybe some friendships and, and relationships, we have some come up with some ways to help you handle these situations. For the caretaker, this person is, person is generally an elderly individual or an old school person is what we like to call them. Um, they're really not up to date with the most nutritional information and they're just generally concerned about your well-being. They may feel that since you're not eating dairy that it will cause weak bones or they don't think you're getting enough nutrition 
um, because you've decided to take, to take grains out of your diet. Um, they're really just concerned about you and they may not understand where you're coming from or the science behind the food. So just be aware of that and you can always explain it to them, but they may not, they may not understand. The food pusher is someone who pressures you to eat something because either they're eating it or they don't want to feel judged by eating it. Um, they look at you, they see that you're amazing, that you look amazing, you feel amazing, and they feel bad about themselves. So really they're just trying to drag you down with them. And with this person, you really don't have to sacrifice your health investments to, to make this person happy. For the insecure relative, this person really just wants reassurance that you care and you appreciate them. I'm sure all of us have heard that one relative that comes up to us and says, I made this just for you, or why aren't you eating my mashed potatoes, you don't like them? They often confuse food and love, they, they feel it's equal. So the best way to, to address this person is to show that you appreciate them or you care for them in other ways by spending time with them or, or just thanking them for everything. And, that way you don't have to eat something that you don't want to. And then you can also use the magic word later, which is one of my personal favorites. Um, many people are guilty of overeating on the holidays, so it's not unusual for someone to offer you dessert and you to tell them that you're full or you'll have some later. Um, no one can really argue with how you feel. And no one really needs to know that you're later, maybe in a month from now, two months from now, two years from now, whenever you decide to incorporate that food back into your life or you've met your goal or your plan. And, and when all else fails, just be honest with them. Tell them why you've decided to make the choices that you are making and that it's your body and your choice and they're making their own choices and so are you. Okay, so, real world stuff, right? Life happens. Okay, we just came to some place and there's this street, this street, this street. Oh my God, I love them all, okay? If you know they're gonna be there, you got three parties, you got two parties on one weekend. So you know that there's gonna be different treats that are gonna be there or you're bringing some of these treats. Now we've talked about that already, what to bring. You know, you can plan your splurges. Like if you're going on vacation, or right? okay, I'm gonna have some alcohol during this time and maybe not this. But so you can plan your splurges. Now, I don't call them cheats. I call them treats. So that, you know, again, I'm not cheating. I'm treating myself. I know I'm doing this. You know, I'm gonna have one kind of food at this, and another kind of food at the next party. So that might be something that you wanna do. Start your own tradition. Okay, after Christmas dinner, this was, this was my house. After Christmas dinner with my grandparents and my parents and my brothers and sisters, we all sit around, they all start playing cribbage. And I can't count worth a darn, so I, I would just sit and watch. But maybe if that's your tradition and what you do, you can say, okay, after every five points, somebody has to get up and run around the table. Or somebody has to get up and lead a stretch. Everybody has to do a stretch of some kind that's right there. So, um, start a new tradition of something like that. Maybe it's going someplace. Okay, we are going and walking down to park down here and walking back afterwards. Something that's healthy. Um, maybe if you have, you know, you can get with the little kids and you have this Xbox game that's kind of fun that isn't too trying, you can play with that. You know, I have a, I have a connect with my Xbox, so I can go down and play some of those funky games and, and look really stupid. <laughs> and that's the whole point. I, I'm one of those that don't care about that. Always planning to minimize that unhealthy eating. Again, treating instead of cheating. You know, if you're doing something that um, you know is or you think is unhealthy, don't dwell on it. Tomorrow's another day. It, the world's not going to end because you ate something that wasn't on your plan. Start again tomorrow. Start with those things that you know you do right, and then move on and keep going with those, okay? 
again, there's, there's just, there's no need to feel powerless in any of this. You are a very powerful person. You are the one who is in charge of everything that goes right in here. And you don't have to feel bad if something that you really like, that, that I, I have tons of foods that I only eat at the holidays. And, and I don't feel bad if I'm going to have a little bit of that. Because I'm going to move on the next day, I'm going to go back and start it. I'm, I'm going to continue to exercise. I'm going to continue to take care of myself. And I'm going to continue to make those mindful deci decisions for myself. Because it's always a choice. And the next one is a choice. And the next one is a choice. So I know what I can choose. So that's the way I go with it. You know, I, and remember, it, as it says here, I thought this was very, very poignant. It's the people and the memories that make a holiday. If you can do things right and find those new traditions that work for you. Hey, that was really cool when we did that last year. Can we do that again? So now you've just come up with that new tradition that was something fun. So, but on behalf of Well Trail, Kelly, Dan, Jenna, uh, and myself, we want to wish all of you very happy, healthy holidays. I'm Unless sorry. I got to Oh, yeah. <laughs>